Well, hey there, it's Sandy Allnock, and several of you have been asking if I was going to check out the Copic Acrea pens. Uh, these are brand new, and they're water-based and opaque. And I was curious about them, but as soon as I got them, I was really <laughs> disappointed. They have this nib. I just can't stand markers that have this nib that you push in, and you have to shake the pen. But I did do a little piece of artwork with it, and we'll talk about the positives and negatives of trying this versus another medium because I'm not really sure what I think of these pens quite yet. So we're going to start out with the testing on these. I picked up two of the sets because several of you just kept asking was I going to try them and as much as I don't have the money to go blowing on markers that I have no idea what they are, I needed to order some paper. And just ordering paper seemed very boring to my artist's heart. And instead, I decided to add a little color to it because these sets are about 20 bucks each. They're only at Blick as far as I know. I don't know if that will change or by the time you see this video, if it will be different. But for now, I'm going to be linking to Blick for these. And I started testing them first on a piece of white paper, and then I started realizing something different about these pens. They're much more like some other pens that I have in pen cups that I also don't like, but I didn't know if I'd like these any better. I tried doing a kind of two-directional swatch on that white to see if I could get it to be really white, white, white. And it is pretty bright, but it's not really flat. The thing that I was excited about seeing the graphics that were like on the Blick site that are provided by Copic of what kind of art you can do with them was these nice flat color swatches and, you know, drawing over top of them and stuff. And I thought, oh, that would be really cool. I didn't realize they had these kind of tips to them. And they're small, so you can get some detail, but they also don't do a large flat area very easily. So there's that. But this one is the essential set, and it comes with, as you see, black, white, gray, uh, silver, and gold. So it's got two metallics and a brown. So they call it the essentials. I guess they figure it goes with everything. I don't really know. And then the other set that I got was the deep set, because I like deep, rich colors. And this is the last thing I would call this set. <laughs> it's, it's not deep. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy and have different ideas in my head for what people should call things, but I would not call this a deep set myself. But you can see on the black paper, they really do pop. So that's good. And they're not like some pens I've had where they don't have enough juice coming out of them. They don't have enough ink or paint or whatever in the pens that they you struggle to try to get anything to show up on a black piece of paper. So they are better in that way. They're just not the kind of pen that I tend to like to use. I like, a, you know, some sort of a softer nib, and these don't have that. It's just that really, really hard nib. And every once in a while, I found myself, like, stopping to shake the pens because they need to be stirred up, I guess, to get the paint to come out the nib. And they, you know, that was just a process to get used to using them in this way. But it's one of those things I haven't liked about this type of pen personally. But, you know, people ask enough and it's a new enough thing. I thought, oh, let me give it a try. They're only 20 bucks for a little set of six. And since they're supposed to be water-based, I said, what happens if I add water to them? Now, that's marker paper, so I wasn't expecting much to happen. This black paper isn't watercolor paper either, but worked a little bit better. So I had a bit of confidence that I could do some water work with it and the word sepia had already dried enough that I could paint right over top of it and end up with nothing moving so they do dry completely permanent once they do dry so let's do a couple comparisons to other pens I have cups and cups and cups of pens galore and then I have boxes of pens and several of you were asking about these pens because they are supposed to be pigment pens they're not paint pens but they're pigment pens and I'd never had tried them on black, and this would be why, because they are transparent pigment pens. But they are water-based for a short period of time, like the Acreas. 
So you can do some water-based stuff with them. I'll link to another video that I did with those using some water-based techniques in the uh, description down below. But they are nothing alike, these two types of pens. So that's one of my pen cups. And I got out all the white ones because I thought, let me just compare these and see if that white pen is like the the mecca of white pens. We've all been wishing that we could find the white pen that will be the the white pen for all ages and see if that helps. The pit pen, you can see, just has a lot of that gray showing through. Posca pens, again, they're that same funky nib and I've just never enjoyed them. Now, I do know that the Acreas and probably the Poscas too, like you can draw on other surfaces on wood and plastic and glass and that sort of thing. That's all great. I don't draw on those things very much. So I don't know, maybe I'll do that with the Acreas at some point and test those out. But uh, this poor pen, this pen touch was just very sad. Now, I don't know. These have been sitting in a cup for a long time. Might, maybe they were a little bit dry. That might have been my fault, not the pens. But you can see the vast difference between them and the Copic Acrea. So if you have wondered if it's just like those, then they are extremely bright. And on the black paper, they do show up really well. And I'll show you a little angle here so you can see the gold and the silver actually have a small bit of shimmer to them, a little bit of shine. You'll be able to see it better in the artwork that I create because that one is quite shimmery when I added the gold to it. So now that we've done some testing, let's do a test project. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to draw and I'm in the midst of making, as I said, a lot of Christmas cards. And so I decided to do that on some uh, Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. Yes, they do make black watercolor paper. It's not great watercolor paper. It's not one I love. But this is one of my practice pieces that I had done before I set up the winter pencil enchantment class that went live recently. So I'll put a link to that in the doobly-doo if you want it. I picked out some colors that I wanted to use for that background bokeh because I want to try doing something really soft in the background and then see what it's like to do something much more crisp and graphic in the foreground with that candle. So I, that's why I picked this piece of art because it had both elements to it. So I put down a little bit of color and then used a very wet brush because I wanted to try to get something uneven with the bokeh dots, not like, you know, really super tight or anything because bokeh is going to be blurry. It's part of the, the whole joy of bokeh is that it's just something blurry in the distance and sets a mood as opposed to trying to paint a specific thing. And in the class, we talk about, you know, how to create bokeh in colored pencil, which turned out to be like a million times easier than what I'm doing here with these pens. <laughs> this was so difficult to get this to work. This was actually my fourth try to get it to work. So it's not fully a test, I suppose, because the first couple came out like totally poo. I tried to do it first on regular cardstock, not on this heavier watercolor paper. That was part of the problem, but it was just really difficult. And what I found was letting some of it dry most of the way and then going back in to work on some of the edges, I could get them a little bit softer. So yeah, this, this was not the brightest idea I've ever had. But I did want to try something with some very soft watercolory type of element in it, as well as something nice and crisp, since that looks like what these markers maybe can do. I'm not sure why they would be water, uh, water meltable, what am, what am, water soluble. That's what I'm looking for. That's the word. Um, not sure why they would call them that if they didn't intend for you to do something watercolory. So that's what I wanted to give it, give a shot to. So here I'm trying to put the colors in the candle flame with a bit of red around the outside edges, little yellow at the base, and then white elsewhere. And I wanted to see if I could get that to fill in. And man, I'm telling you, it was just so hard to get anything solid that wasn't starting to pill up. So I would start getting like the surface of the paper just kind of lifting up. And it wasn't just the paper, it was on every paper I tried. And it's just the nature of this kind of a tip of a pen. If you've used Posca's and tried to do anything detailed like this, then you probably know that's one of the reasons mine just sit in a cup. 
in case I just need a little touch of something. That's really all I get them out for. But uh, then started working on the candle wax itself. Wanted to have that yellow at the top and the red down below. Again, this was significantly easier in colored pencil than it is here. It took me probably twice as long to do this in the Copic Acreas than it took in the colored pencil. And yeah, and that, that's when colored pencil takes a while and this took just much longer. I was trying to get the colors to blend together. I wanted to see if I could get something that got softer at the bottom by making that red thinner. And it dried like this really weird kind of chalky color. And I kept trying to go back into it to add more color, you know, dried it so that I could then do the next layer over top of it. And you can see I'm just kind of struggling because underneath of it, I'm just getting this kind of weird pilling up stuff. And the surface was just getting mucky. And it was just the nibs. The nibs were just chewing up anything underneath of it, all the color that was there. But I kept trying, I kept going, adding more of the yellow to try to get that edge to soften. And the more water I would add to it, the more it just kind of seemed to keep making more problems. But when you first put the color down, if you don't do any water blending with it, it'll stay pretty bright. But how do you get the blend going from one thing to another? These are just not made for that kind of art, I guess. Because every time I touched the water, I would wreck it once again. I was trying to be really careful. But there were just, there were a couple other times that I even cut out of this video because it was just like, okay, well, I did that and then I redid it and then I redid it. And it was just not, not easy. So I will have to see if I can come up with another project to do this. But in the meantime, if you want to make this candle, I would recommend the class instead of these markers. The class may not be, uh, uh, as as quick as just making the decision to buy a set of markers but at least it's gonna give you more education because there's 10 different scenes in it because it's one of the enchantment series now here's another place i put gold those last minute gold sparkles there and right in the middle of my sentiment like the stupid pen kept like you know, blipping and, did, you know, glitching and not writing. So I had to keep shaking it and testing it again. It was just a pain. So I'm not going to say you should rush out and get these. I'm not putting them on my gift guide for this year unless I find something else before I put the gift guide out that, that says that these are good. But that doesn't mean you can't try them. But I would rather do it in color pencil and get it done a little bit quicker myself. Because it's just got a different feel to it. And... It's nice. I'll certainly send this postcard to somebody. And yes, I said postcard because since it is waterproof, I can put that in the mail. So I'm going to see if the post office will send it with white pen written on the back. So we'll find out. In my next video on Saturday, I'm going to cover Copic Acrea paint pens for stampers and ways that you can use them with different mediums. So be sure to tune in for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure you do that before you head out and click that like button because it really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Go create something every day. Bye-bye.